Welcome to the very first PCF uh, podcast. Uh, today we have in our studio Hannah Yates and uh, Ben Sullivan, our uh, PCF in-house veterinarians. And we are going to have a discussion about uh, ultrasound benefits. Uh, why veterinarians should be using ultrasound and what are the key kind of benefits for, for, uh, for them adopting this technology. And um, nowadays there are a lot of, still there are a lot of veterinarians that are still using manual palpation and they believe that manual palpation is better than ultrasound. So uh, what would you say to these people, why they should be investing in technology uh, like ultrasound? I think probably first and foremost, uh, technology moves on in all fields, vet veterinary medicine and, and all other aspects. And I think if you're not seen to be at the cutting edge of the te technological developments, then really you can't expect to be taken seriously in an industry that's, that's developing rapidly um, and where um, increasingly the, the customer base, so the farmers, are, are well informed about what they should be doing and what their veterinarians should be doing and quite rightly they're, they're expecting the highest level of service and, and knowledge and I think uh, if, you're, if you're trying to promote not moving forward with the technology then you, you're really going to struggle with, with promoting your knowledge and your services to, to those, pe those customers who are, who are keen for, you know, for the best. What do you think, Hannah, why they should be investing in ultrasound from your point of view? <coughs> I think personally, I, think I completely agree with Ben. Like You're always wanting to do the, you know, the gold standard and that, that's what you, what you aim for. And obviously there's always kind of economic constraints and things like that that need to be taken into con um, account. Um, but as I say, I think that keeping up with what, where the profession is evolving is a very important part. Uh, and there are lots of kind of added benefits to using technology to the best of your capability. Um, One of the things we hit here quite a lot, obviously talking to both to farmers and to veterinarians who don't use the technology, I guess the, mi the most typical response is, I don't need that. I've been doing this for years. I'm as accurate as somebody using uh, an ultrasound machine and I can do it more quickly because I don't have to use the machine. I just put my hand in and, and then away I go. Um, and there's no investment uh, in equipment, quite expensive equipment as it's seen. So they, they therefore, the argument is that it, it's more economic, it's more time efficient, and so the, the farmer uh, gets a better uh, deal. But the, I think the reality is that the evidence suggests that, that it, it just is not as accurate. But would you um, not say as well, one of, the, one of the other kind of key kind of things we get is that people have moved over and started using ultrasonography, then very rapidly, like, I'm not sure really how I ever didn't use it before, um, I'm diagnosing a lot more, I'm using it outside the box. I mean, like with the easy scans, not only for the repro work, but it could be used on things like teats and wounds, and you can see what's kind of going on. Yeah. And not only do they get a lot more satisfaction, uh, a bit of a buzz, really, um, you are kind of, you know, you're on the kind of the, kind of the business kind of side of things. You're getting those, calves, uh, those cows back in calf quicker. Um, you're getting, you know, you're optimising kind of um, the kind of milk yields and things like that uh, as a byproduct. And therefore, these kind of things aren't necessarily seen at the time uh, yeah. beforehand. But as I say, it is a message that we kind of keep getting back to us. I think yeah. oh, se separate from that as well, um, there, there are arguably people who, who can uh, reasonably accurately diagnose uh, uh, pathology, stage of the Easter cycle and so on. But there are, there are certainly conditions that also cannot be diagnosed by manual palpation. What um, kind of conditions? So I think uh, early endometritis cases would be right up there as a significant cause of, of um, reduced uh, economic yield of a dairy herd. Um, and uh, in these early cases, uh, sure, many will have some sort of vaginal discharge that's, you know, that's evident from externally uh, you know, visible to the farmer, but many also won't. Um, and they can only really be diagnosed either by, uh, you know, by uterine swabs, but but also visualised ultrasonographically. There are also certain conditions which can be very confusing manually. So, uh, for example, um, pyometra, which can feel quite like a, a pregnancy, uh, unless you, unless you have the ultrasound exam to, to differentiate the two. There are also uh, certain things that just cannot be done without the ultrasound machine. Fetal sexing is becoming increasingly popular and, and obviously you need to be able to see an image of the fetuses for that. Um, the other thing is, uh, I guess increasingly it's becoming important to, if, you, if you're um, examining a cow, to be able to assess the viability of the calf. So does it have a heartbeat? Is it alive? 
Um, and also, more and more studies now have looked into the um, into measurable parameters of the of the fetus that allow us to much more accurately age the pregnancy. So again, uh, it, it would be really very difficult to accurately age, particularly the later stage pregnancies, uh, just by manual palpation. Um, whereas using an ultrasound image, we can focus on particular parts of the fetus, measure them, and get reasonably accurate data as to uh, you know as to when the cow is going to calf, which information obviously Im improves uh, in the long term, improves uh, the financial viability of the, of the farm uh, for the farmer. Okay. Some veterinarians are still uh, uh, using really bulky and you know, really heavy uh, stationary machines for uh, identifying uh, pregnancy uh, on, on the on bovine farm. So what would you say to these people, like what kind of machines they can use and how it can help them uh, in their day-to-day -day work? Well, uh, well, as ever, like, technology has kind of advanced kind of dramatically in recent years and everything is getting much smaller, much lighter, much more kind of durable and weatherable. So now, kind of, um, what used to be carried around in like, literally wheelbarrows at times is now kind of in a very kind of portable uh, device that can kind of uh, just rest on the hip nicely. Weighs about kind of two, two and a half kind of kilos. Really uh, nice and easy to use. You can use it with goggles, which means you're not having to, um, you know, you can just literally look straight up and you'll see the image. Um, you're not going to get caught on crushes. You can easily move around. And you also have other kind of viewing devices like uh, the remote display, so then the farmer can see what you're seeing um, and, you know, learning, and, and then they kind of get more and more vested in it as well. So and, and I think also for teaching as well, for, for these remote displays enable uh, veterinarians who are teaching other veterinarians, teaching students, um, to discuss the image that they're seeing and, 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 and really try to help them progress their own skills as well. Mm -hmm. Some people uh, have a fear as well that ultrasound is um, something really, really difficult to learn. Uh, what would you say to uh, this kind of people that's starting up with ultrasound and how, quick they, uh, how quickly they can acquire um, you know, competency in using ultrasound? Yeah, I, it's, a new, it's a new skill. It will take some time to learn, of course. However, I think the, the harder part of the technique by far is knowing where to find the structures that you're going to be imaging, uh, how to identify them, um, and, and, and obviously then palpate them if you're not using ultrasound. That's the hard part. So if you can already do that, actually with the ultrasound, all you're then doing is, is, is identifying that structure and then putting the probe in place over it, which is not a new skill. You already have that. So then the re only real, real difference is that you have to learn how to interpret the image, and that actually is the easy part. Of course it takes practice, of course you will re require time uh, initially being taught how to do it, so um, uh, either uh, attending a course where somebody experienced can come along and teach you, and or that there are an awful lot of learning materials uh, freely available as well, um, and then practice, like with anything. But I think most vets, as, uh, as we discussed earlier, realise that actually they pick up the skill rather more quickly than they anticipated, mm -hmm. and also then can't imagine going back to, to doing their job or being able to do their job properly without it. It's quite a gratifying kind of um, skill to learn as well because you're seeing something straight away. Yes, okay, you might not be able to interpret it. Yes, you might have to you know, just, just finesse it, um, uh, etc. But it, it's quite a kind of a gratifying way to do it. And as Ben says, people often do go, oh, God, I can, I, I can actually see it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it isn't, there isn't a lot of smoke and mirrors. It is very easy. And as I say, like with our online resources of, you know, we've got videos um, of what you should be looking at and what things look like. There's booklets out there. We have sample images. I mean, we're there to help support to kind of get, getting started and everything with it as well. So it, it's, as I say, we, because that ground has already kind of been started to be um, uh, covered by kind of uh, lots of kind of vets out there, we do have more resources available for people who are just getting into it for the first time. Well, some people ask, like, how many cows I, I need to scan before I can be confident that I can pick up pregnancy and the age of the fetus. Roughly, are there any kind of estimation of... I think that hugely happen? depends on the individual. Inevitably, some people just have a talent to pick these things up quite quickly. Other people may maybe take slightly longer. Um, it would certainly be measured in hundreds, so I think, y you know, it's not going to come within five or ten cows. However, depending on the size of the farm and the work you're doing, Actually, the reality of scanning hundreds of cows rather than thousands 
is it, that's not a long t- period of time in most cases. You know, most veterinarians now, particularly those who are focusing purely on, you know, on on cattle work, that that's maybe a week, two weeks work at most. That, that you're not talking about long periods of time. Obviously, we all learn all the time when nobody's ever n- has all the knowledge, uh, and you'll always see something that you've not seen before after even years. But I think a, a basic competency can really be picked up. In, in real terms, actually, very quickly. And with the new machines as well, it's all, also possible to take um, sample images. Uh, they can then be downloaded off the console and like, sent to kind of um, different veterinarians as well for some kind of further opinion and things like that. And with the joy of kind of technology as well, it's not only needing somebody right next to you to do mm-hmm. look at that. You can actually send it potentially all over the world to kind of yeah. get get an opinion on it. Is ultrasound uh, harmful for an animal health? Like some people still think that it's can be harmful, so it can... Um I think the an- short answer to that is no. Um, you are going to be using the ultrasound in one of two ways. Either you will hold the probe in your hand, in which case you're doing a rectal examination on the cow, which you would have been doing anyway. The alternative is some veterinarians will use the probe within an introducer, so like a long pole, basically. Um, there is risk associated with that, if you're not careful, of course, because you can't tell where you're putting that uh, as accurately. Your hand isn't in there. Uh, that said, there are an awful lot of things that as veterinarians we do to animals which, if we weren't careful, would be harmful. So given that the onus is on the vet to be careful, and I think if they take the care to do that, there's, there's no harm associated with that. Um, it, again, it's a new technique to get used to, perhaps, for if you've always been used to putting your hand in and doing a rectal examination, and now you've got to change and do it with an introducer, fine. But you don't have to do that, you can do it manually. Um, and it, it's safe if, if you're careful. Yes. So what are the key reasons why uh, veterinarians should be investing in technology like ultrasound? Yeah, I, I think um, as veterinarians we, we really... Uh, need to put animal welfare top of our priority list um, and I think that uh, the benefits to um, to the cow and, and, and calf health as well with the reproductive ultrasound are, are such that it can only be seen as being being a welfare uh, step up from you know from just doing the manual palpation. Realistically economics are always important and there are enough benefits of ultrasonography over, uh, over manual palpation that uh, I think there's di- it's difficult to really have any sensible argument uh, that it is anything other than better, economically speaking, for the farmer. Um, and I think the, the last thing would be that, uh, as, a, as a veterinarian and also as, as farmers, it's more professionally satisfying and rewarding um, knowing that you are doing what is, is currently the, the, the sort of gold standard for, for providing... Um, care to to cows and uh, you know and and being at the forefront of of, of the of the dairy industry. Okay, Anna, could you summarize the key benefits from your perspective? I would kind of very much agree with kind of Ben. I think I think he's been kind of very kind of comprehensive on that uh, animal health and welfare, not only for that and uh, the calves and you know on the reproduction side, but as we we're saying about picking up disease early, things like that. I mean you're not only going to be, um, it's much better to any disease to pick up early um, and to kind of treat early on, but also, you know, that has kind of economic benefits as well, you know. Um, uh, then, obviously, I know about the um, kind of economic benefits as a whole, um, and again, kind of satisfaction not only for the for the vets as well, but also for the, the farmers looking after, after the herd. Um, it can kind of really kind of benefit them enormously to be seeing, you know, what they're doing and, and also kind of monitoring the progress of how, how much it's kind of improving their health and welfare um, since kind of introducing kind of ultrasonography. Thank you so much uh, for today's interview and you can find more information about uh, ultrasound benefits and lots of clinical material on our website, uh, www.bcftechnology.com.